we recently published a review article on the clinical considerations of management of androgen and different prostate cancer, such as neuroendocrine prostate cancer. The majority of our drugs for advanced prostate cancer work by blocking androgen receptor signaling. But with uh, increased use of these drugs, we've seen an uh, increasing number of men develop androgen and different prostate cancer as a resistance mechanism to these therapies. Uh, we have the best estimates for neuroendocrine prostate cancer, which seems to arise in about one in six to one in 10 men with metastatic castration resistant prostate cancer. And detecting these androgen and different prostate cancer variants has important clinical implications. First is that they're often associated with poor outcomes, shorter overall survival, and worse response to androgen receptor and si signaling inhibitors such as abiraterone or enzalutamide. Second is that they seem to respond uh, to, to non-traditional prostate cancer therapies. The standard of care treatment for neuroendocrine prostate cancer, for example, is a toposide plus platinum chemotherapy, which is extrapolated from the small cell lung cancer literature and is not a chemotherapy regimen we would typically use in prostate cancer. And finally, as our understanding of these prostate cancer variants has expanded, there are several ongoing clinical trials investigating targeted therapy and immunotherapy approaches in these patients. And so I think maximizing sur survival for men with advanced prostate cancer is gonna require a precision medicine approach, which will include defining consensus criteria for these prostate cancer subtypes, um, developing uh, novel um, biomarkers and, and molecular imaging techniques to, for early and accurate detection of these prostate cancer subtypes and developing and testing um, subtype specific uh, therapies to, to maximize survival for, for men diagnosed with these androgen and different prostate cancer subtypes. We now have several diagnostic modalities to identify subgroups of men with advanced prostate cancer who are likely to benefit from targeted therapies. These include germline sequencing, uh, tumor genomic profiling, cell-free DNA analysis, and molecular imaging. And after years of using these tools to study and understand drivers of prostate cancer, we now have several uh, targeted therapy for men in biomarker selected populations of uh, advanced prostate cancer who um, will benefit from these targeted therapies. And the first class of drugs to be approved as targeted therapy in advanced prostate cancer was PARP inhibitors, specifically alaparib and rucaparib for men with DNA damage repair deficient prostate cancer. Um, the profound study uh, for, for prostate or for alaparib in advanced prostate cancer, you know, demonstrated uh, benefit for men with several DNA damage repair gene alterations. Since then, we've fine-tuned our understanding of this, and, and uh, emerging literature suggests that certain genes, BRCA1, BRCA2, PALB2, seem to indicate the, the largest benefit or the most likely to benefit from uh, treatment with PARP inhibitor, whereas other genes like ATM and others um, seem to seem, seem less likely to predict benefit to treatment with PARP inhibitors. The newest treatment, which I'll talk a little bit more about uh, later on, is lutetium PSMA, which uh, just demonstrated benefit in, in the vision trial for men with PSMA PET positive uh, advanced prostate cancer. And, and I think, you know, we, we have a long way to go, and there's a lot of exciting work being done to develop biomarkers for selecting patients, uh, selecting treatment in patients with advanced prostate cancer. You know, a study by, uh, led by Anas Hamid and Chris Sweeney that was recently published in the Annals of Oncology um, demonstrated that transcriptome or, or RNA-seq profiling of, of metastatic hormone-sensitive prostate cancer tumors from the charted study identified molecular signatures that were predictive or, or most predictive of benefit to the addition of early dose taxol to androgen deprivation therapy. In contrast, a separate um, molecular signature was, was identified a, a cohort of men who did not seem to benefit from the addition of early dose taxol. And so I think studies like this provide a really important proof of principle that we can use these um, uh, molecular tools to identify uh, specific populations of patients with advanced prostate cancer who are most likely to benefit from one therapy or another. And I think there's, there's a particularly big need in metastatic hormone sensitive prostate cancer where we have several highly effective therapies, but are really lacking in biomarkers to um, identify which patients are most likely to, to identify, to, to benefit from which treatment.